So now you've prepped your MacBook uh, for the transfer, the hard drive change, um, it's time to take it to bits. Now, as you'll see here, um, this is a thumb drive where I had OS X Yosemite installed as a bootable version. That is absolutely essential, as I said. Um, and then here is my boot camp external hard drive. Um, my time machine external hard drive, my apologies. Um, now, as any uh, good Mac enthusiast will know, the Mac screws are very fiddly, so I've brought across a couple of precision sets. So I've got a precision um, set here, which has got some uh, slotted uh, screwdrivers, some cross-point screwdrivers, uh, and a handy set of tweezers, just in case I've got any loose screws. Um, and then a torque set. Uh, now, these have been um, a saviour to me. Uh, five quid off eBay nearly four years ago. Uh, very simple, very easy, and I've used one several times. Um, now, another piece of kit is this simple device. It's called a spudger, according to ifixit.com. Um, picked it up off there, $2.95, got it shipped over here. What I would say is anyone who's going to purchase this from their website, do be careful. Um, I relatively found out myself that uh, HM Revenues and Customs... Um, have an 895 import duty on anything over 14 pounds uh, i did ship this with something else so i paid an extra eight quid it is cheaper to order it from the uk at the us site rather than european site but you will be waiting maybe two to three weeks instead now let's get to taking this laptop apart um as again the early 2011 macbook pro model uh, comes with 10 screws in this lovely brushed aluminium case and Apologies for the scratches. Um, it's worth noticing two things. Do be careful with your screwdriver. You don't want to be causing any damage um, to any of the components, let alone the lovely brush shell. Um, and obviously the mag power uh, on the side um, is magnetic. If you get a screw in there, you're going to be there for ages if you don't have a set of tweezers. That's where um, this little beauty came from. Now, let's get to taking these off. Uh, maybe I'll put some orchestral music in that doesn't infringe copyright. Um, now, due to a filming error earlier, some of these screws will be easier to take out than normal. Um, I'll just slot them back in just for recording purposes. It is worth noting there are three longer ones if you've got the case as I have, um, I've got it upside down. Um, so what would be your left is now your right. There are three longer ones just in this back here um, as you're looking at it front to back. Um, I like to just set them up on a piece of paper at the back. You can't quite make it out just so I remember where the screws came from um, because you don't want to be getting them in the wrong place because they hold various parts of the logic board together. Now, here is the internals of the MacBook Pro. Um, you have the battery here in the bottom right, the hard drive, which I'm obviously going to be taking out on the bottom left, um, the CD Slim Drive Super Drive on the top left. Um, these are a few of the uh, first fulls, uh, Bluetooth, wireless antenna, speaker, and actually a subwoofer, um, very small. And then here's the logic board. Now, the logic board is actually smaller than... You know, the battery and the, the CD drive. Now, Apple technicians have done a wonderful job um, in keeping sizes down and, and you know, giving you the products that you know and love. Um, now, just to kick things off with this, you want to be very, very safe and careful. Battery is obviously connected, and anyone who will know Macs know that the laptops go to sleep. Um, and laptops in general keep flowing power just to keep the internal battery going. Now, we don't want to short anything out. We don't want to cause any damage to the logic board. So right here... Um, is the connector for the battery onto the actual computer itself. So we'll just pry this up, just put the flat end of the spudger just underneath and just give it a twist. Um, that will just lift it up nicely without damaging any of the connectors and then just bend the cables back so there's no way it can just, as you'll see, it's already just started to fall back, but just so it doesn't connect during the, during the servicing. Um, now what you have here in the hard drive is you've got two brackets either side which hold in a couple of screws. Uh, which just keep the hard drive from moving around. The last thing you want is any damage happening, especially with a mechanical drive, not so much with a solid state. Um, but if they move around, you could get the platter hitting the, uh, the head hitting the platter, uh, causing scratch, and there you're invalidating a whole bunch of data, um, especially when you've got such high density platters. Uh, nowadays, you could write off an entire gigabyte with a small scratch, and you don't want that. Um, be careful when you're taking these off. Uh, you only need to take off this top bracket here, just next to the CD drive. 
and just lift once it's undone just lift it up and it should if it doesn't come up just get your spudger and just give it a pry up much but you haven't unscrewed something properly and just lay that to rest somewhere it's easy to see now um i will upload um the paper guide i followed for my fixer i'll put that in the in the comments um, they do actually have a system in place where you can take out the CD drive as well and put a hard drive in that. I'm not tempted to do it just yet. I do use that hard drive, uh, that CD drive, sorry. Um, so, so it's one for your wearies, but it, it will cost you about $45, $50 um, plus postage, so about $60 in total um, to get all the equipment that they, they advertise, uh, which comes to obviously about £40 plus the extra £8 that you'll get for the import duty um, and, and you could be set to go. I'm, I'm very tempted, but not just yet. So now I've taken out this bracket, it's time just to lift the hard drive up. Now they actually have this handy plastic pull tab um, just to pull it up, but be very careful because what you've got underneath is the ribbon that connects the hard drive to the motherboard. So we're just going to, without pulling too hard, just lightly pull it away from the hard drive and it should disconnect as easily as that. Now. Um, obviously, it's an absolutely tiny, tiny device, um, great for all the space saving um, that you want. Now, it actually has four screws just in the side. If I hold it like that, you should be able to see just on the sides there that um, keep it in place in the brackets. You'll just see the orange bit there. Um, we're going to take them out and put them in the solid state drive, but let's get that solid state drive out. Um, as I said, a Crucial MX100, I'll put a link in the description. Um, for, for what made me buy it. It's actually the BitTech website in their custom PC magazine. Um, again, due to the magic of filming, I've already had a look at this. Um, but if this seal is broken when you come to get the drive out, get in contact with your supplier immediately. Um, you have no idea what's happened to the drive and you don't want to risk anything, especially when you're paying £130 um, for a brand new drive. You want it to be absolutely special and perfect. This is a static proof case um, just to reduce any possibility of damage in transit. Now let's get the old hard drive next to it and you can see they're identical sizes. Now um, solid state drives don't need to really be this big but they've got to fit an old form factor um, but even with that still Apple have done a fantastic job um, in getting their mechanical drive to fit into the same um, space as a solid state drive. Um, it's all of their space saving um, it's, it's what makes the Apple products so great in that they can do, you know, put such brilliant products in such a small space. Now let's get my Torx screwdriver and what we'll do is we'll just undo these four screws. Ready to pop out. Now be very careful, you don't want to cause any damage to this green bit around here. Um, as long as you're you know, not conducting static electricity, it should be fine to touch, but um, it's always better to be safe than sorry. I'm actually going to use this 500, hard drive, 500 gig hard drive. I'm going to get an external enclosure, enclosure sorry, um, and make it an external backup drive um, for this. So I'm freeing up my other external hard drive. It'll be very easy to do. Um, now, you can take this tab off uh, and put it on your new hard drive, which I'm going to do. That way, if I need to take it off in the future, I'm not going to have to mess around. I can literally just pull the tab, lift it up. So let's put the screws in. So as I said, these are the ones that just hold it in place, um, stop it from moving around. It's not as crucial, as I said, with a solid state drive as it is with a mechanical drive. But even just for aesthetics, you don't really want it moving about, creating a noise, uh, potentially causing damage to other components in the laptop. Um, especially when they're as expensive as they are. Sorry for the silence. There we go. All right, so all of them are securely in. 
next stage, let's attach the SATA cable back to it, the SATA and power cable. That just slots in nicely and then just place it in the bracket. Now you can remove this other bracket if you want, just on the bottom here, um, but just because it slots out nicely that way, you can just place the screws back in and then let's place the bracket in. And just screw that in like so. Right, so let me just give that a quick test, just so there's no movement. Um, it's fine, there's no backwards and forwards movement that I should be scared about. There's a touch of side to side, um, but that is absolutely harmless. Now, um, it is slightly thinner, so you've saved a touch of space, um, but you know, every extra little helps, a little bit of airflow, um, could be that saving grace for your system that keeps it cooler for longer. So let's just uh, reattach this power cable like so. So power will start running through the system again once we've put it back together and let's just put the back plate back on. Now um, you may or may not remember from the start of the video you just want to be very careful about the screws. So we've got the three long ones, um, slightly longer screw, or quite considerably longer. Um, that's just about the, uh, the, the you know, just uh, not even a, so much of a nail in width. Um, whereas these ones are considerably longer. So just pop the long ones back again in the top right um, of the back plate, and then the rest, the small ones, just all slot in 